this is a spectroscope. The spectroscope spreads light out into the different colors that the light arrives at, or more accurately, into its separate frequencies or wavelengths. What if I were to point my spectroscope at a light source that is a white light source? What I see is a rainbow, or better language, a continuous spectrum. I see all the wavelengths that make up that visible light. But what if I now allow that light to pass through a gas? And in this case, my gas is going to be hydrogen. What will I see as that light passes through the gas back to my eyes? In this case, I see lines missing. Somehow, some certain wavelengths or frequencies have been absorbed. And so this is called an absorption spectrum. But, but what I notice is that my gas cloud has started to glow. What would I see if I just examine the light coming from my gas cloud? Hmm, it seems to be emitting only very specific wavelengths. It's like emitting light. And so it's called an emission spectrum. If I line up my emission spectrum with my absorption spectrum, I will find that the lines that were missing happen to be the lines that are present in my emission spectrum. They are sort of an inverse. How can we explain that? Now, to understand that, we need to understand how light interacts with an atom. And what I have is a model of the hydrogen atom that is referred to as the Bohr-Rutherford model of the atom. That is, it's a planetary model where the electrons are in orbit around a central nucleus. And the electrons can only exist in discrete energy levels, or sometimes referred to as shells. So in other words, they can exist in the first, second, third, fourth, and there are more energy levels, but they cannot exist in between. If white light hits this electron that is sitting in a particular lower shell, it has the potential to jump to a new energy level or not. And it'll only jump to a new energy level if the energy it receives is equal exactly to the difference in the energy levels. So let's say my electron is sitting in the energy level of number two and white light hits it. If it does jump into energy level three, is what we have is that the energy level three minus the energy level two is a specific value of energy that has to equal the energy of the photon it receives. And that photon's energy will be HF. This is also equal to HC over lambda. It now tells you that reason for why we have the absorption spectrum. My hydrogen is absorbing only very specific photons with a specific energy in order for it to jump the energy level. And the different lines represent different jump. So for example, in this case, it's going from E2 to E3, but it could equally jump, go from E3 to E5, which represents a different energy level. But why is it glowing? Well, these electrons can jump back down again, and they do so spontaneously. As a result, because of conservation of energy, they have to emit a photon. In this case, that photon's energy must be equal to the difference. For example, it might jump from E5 down to E4, which gives us a very specific energy. Of course, it could jump from E5 down to E3. That will give us a different energy loss. E5 jumping down to E2, that will be a different frequency again. Therefore, if the electron jumps from energy level five, it can release three different frequencies or wavelengths as a result. And because these are fired off in random directions, what you end up seeing is the occasional photon of those particular frequencies hitting your eyes. If you look from the side, this explains our emission spectrum. Now, these frequencies are unique to hydrogen. The energy levels for each of the atoms in the periodic table are different, which means that the frequency you get are unique to the element that you have causing the absorption and emission, which means our spectroscopy analysis allows us to identify the element that is causing the spectra. Two examples, this absorption spectrum of the sun, that the light that's generated in the core is passing through its own atmosphere. And if observed here on Earth, it's passing through the Earth's atmosphere. By studying the lines, you can determine the chemical composition of the gases which is interacting with the light. Now, what about emission spectrum? Take, for example, my, one of my favorite images, the Pillars of Creation, a nebula where new stars are being born, taken by our very own 
Hubble Space Telescope. Now the colors are giving us an indication of their chemical composition. So sulfur, oxygen and nitrogen present within the pillars of creation. And again, it is the emission spectra of those gas clouds that allow us to determine those chemicals. So that, in a nutshell, is spectroscopy. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.